Surface Paradise International Circuit is two miles. The width is 30 feet, the surface is hot mixed bitumen, and the main straight is a half mile in length by 45 feet in width, and the racing is in a clockwise direction. Yes, and to do this today, this International 100 is 50 laps. While yesterday in practice we saw some very, very fast times being recorded. In fact, the lap record, official lap record, was broken in the practice session by 3.1 seconds, which is a terrific uh, achievement. It gave the, the driver that recorded the fastest time, which was Chris Amon, who will go into pole position. You can see him on the left-hand side of your screen there, going into pole position. His, lap, his average lap speed was 103.6 miles per hour. There he is, the number one team Ferrari driver in the World Championship events for 1968, getting the last minute check over. And we have, uh, following the, the preliminary race that was on this morning, the 10 laps, uh, a little bit of concern in the Ferrari team because of the, um, on the left-hand pipe, which you can see just down at the rear of the car there, a little grain of water on the warm-up lap for the preliminary, and it did look like as if there possibly could be uh, a, head, a faulty head gasket here, allowing water to get into the engine. But anyway, the Ferrari's on the line. Alongside of him will be the gold, uh, gold Leaf Team Lotus car of Jimmy Clark, and there's Clark just getting out now. You can see him sitting up in the cockpit getting um, some, someone a well-wisher there, giving him the, uh, the pat on the back sort of thing as they get through. The drivers get a lot of this on the start line. Clark just having a look around his car with his mechanics, and he qualified yesterday. His time was 1 minute 9.9 .9 seconds. Now, completing the front row of the grid, we'll have Graham Hill, who's also driving a Lotus 49. Hill has just joined the Tasman Cup series, um, coming out from England last week, and he's here to compete in the four races in Australia. You'll notice that the distinctive stripes on his crash helmet, this represents the uh, old boys or the London Rowing Club old boys where Hill used to be quite an avid rower in days gone by. Well, on the second row of the grid, over to the uh, inside position, we have a very, very fast time recorded. We're just trying to pick up. It's Frank Gardner there yesterday in the Alpha Brabham. Uh, this is a very, very unusual car. The first season we've ever seen it race. It's a lightweight Brabham chassis with a two and a half litre V8 Alpha engine. And that's Frank Gardner just climbing out now. Frank had a very successful year in Britain last year, winning the saloon car championship in a Falcon. And uh, indeed a very, very accomplished driver in single seater sports car or saloon car racing. Coming through now, we go to the young Londoner, 26 years of, old, uh, of age, is Piers Courage, and he's driving the 1.6 litre McLaren Cosworth that he drove in Formula 2 races last year. This is a very light car. It's uh, one of the quickest we've seen uh, recorded here because of its engine size of 1,600 cc's compared to the uh, 2,500 cc's of the others. And uh, Courage is in good form indeed. He is lying second at present with Jimmy Clark in the Tasman Cup table uh, with 15 points to Amon's 27. Amon a very, having a very reliable run so far in the Ferrari and he's had two wins, a second and a fourth in the last race in New Zealand. We go back now to the inside again to pick up the BRMs which have qualified uh, fairly, fairly quickly there. That is Pedro Rodriguez sitting tucked away down in the car. You can't see much of the driver at this stage, but uh, there's a lot of engine in behind him. This is a V12 BRM, two and a half litre capacity, developing about 330 brake horsepower. The car itself was designed primarily for the Tasman Cup series, and so far they haven't had a very good run. They won one race in New Zealand, Bruce McLaren doing this for them, and uh, he uh, notched up a fourth place elsewhere. But other than that, they haven't had very much success in New Zealand, and we only hope that the BRM mechanics have had time to um, sort things out quite considerably for the rest of the Australian races. On the outside of him, we'll just try and pick them up for you as we see them go through. That looks... Yes, we're just trying to see that. That looks like it could be... Um, can't quite see the, the car number there. There's been a bit of a change on the grid since we got the grid positions. If we can sort of see who the driver is. It looks like Greg Cusack and the two and a half litre Repco Brabham, it is at that. He did a, a fairly quick time yesterday in one minute 12.2. Didn't have a very happy run in the heat earlier on this morning. Uh, couldn't quite get past the 1600cc car of Courage. Courage incidentally recorded a very, very quick time yesterday in one minute 
uh, 11.4. So to give you just some idea that he's going extremely quick in this little 1600cc car. Coming back through onto the grid, we'll see them lining up now. We're just trying to see um, some of the activity there. We're obscured a little bit from the cars. But we had Leo Geegan who did a, a fairly quick time. That's Dickie Atwood there with the BRM, the V12, two and a half litre. Once again, identical car to the car driven by Pedro Rodriguez. That's Kevin Bartlett in the two and a half litre four-cylinder Coventry Climax engine. We have a great um, variety of engines today. We look at the V6 Ferrari engine, the V8s Cosworth Fords, the V8 Ripco Brabham's, the little four-cylinder 1600cc Cosworth Ford, and I'm just looking to see if we can get some idea where Denny Holm is. Now, this morning in the early race, Denny Holm got into a bit of bad luck in one of the corners there. He spun out and dropped it into a bank, and... Um, they had to work very furiously to get his suspension set up and we're just sort of looking down on the grid to see if he's come through yet. I think this could be why the delay is that we haven't got Denny Holm, the 1967 world champion, with his 1600cc Brabham on the line yet. So this was possibly why everyone else is sort of, we're just waiting to see him come through. We can have a look up there. There's the front row lined up. On the inside of there, Amon is ready to go. The red Ferrari this morning showed good form indeed to outclass the others. The results of the race at this 10 lap, 20 miles it was. The two V8 uh, Lotus, and here's Denny Holm just coming out now. Car number one, he's been given this distinction. And he will probably go and do a, well they might not let him do a warm up lap. And there's a great ovation going out for him. A grand effort by his mechanic, Johnny Martin. Just the two of them working with the car throughout the Australasian series. And you'll see them there just cleaning the tyres up, checking it out to see that it's okay. Quite a bit of activity going on, so it shouldn't be very long now before we see the cars fire up. And the fifth heat in the 1968 Tasman Cup Championship Series will be underway. Meantime, the other drivers lower themselves back into their cockpits. They drive almost in a reclining position. Still more activity on the grid as cars are being moved back and forward into their correct positions. And in the background you can probably hear the distinctive sound of one of the BRMs warming up. Yes, Clive, they have to give them quite an extensive warming up because they have a, a very huge uh, sort of oil capacity and it takes a long time to circulate this through and get the, um, the oil going right down through the system. The one minute siren has gone. Still a tremendous amount of activity down there on the grid. Well, the mechanics and sidesmen and assistants moving now back off the grid. Well, the most important thing here, I think, is who's going to be in the Dunlop corner first because this is where the break is going to come. If Amon can get through there past the Lotuses, he can then head them off going into Lukey Corner, which will be very, very critical indeed, especially on the first lap. But Clark is well-renowned for his performances off the grid. He anticipates the start beautifully and makes a real good start. So we're waiting to see just what happens here. The field is ready to go. Amon, Clark alongside of him. Then we've got Graham Hill in behind us, Leo Geegan. The flag is up. So BRM are creeping up there. Rodriguez is going. And Clark's made a good start. quite handy, he'll be second in behind like it was, it made the jump on the field, a very good start indeed from Amon, and they head into Lukey Corner now, Courage came through and actually touched Graham Hill's car Piers Courage in the little 1.6 litre, and there's Hill going around the outside now, trying to get past Courage but it's Clark showing the way now to Amon as they streak along the shell straight down into Firestone Corner Round they go, there's the red Ferrari right in behind, a lot tighter. Clark using quite a bit of the track to keep the Ferrari at bay. We'll pick them up as they go into this very tight corner now, round through Lucas. There they go, it's Jimmy Clark showing the way now to Chris Amon. Clark very wide out, and here they come into the S's. Of quite a handful indeed to drive through there. The rest of the field streaming through at this stage. Clark, 
And it's Amon getting his toe down. Behind the Lotus, and there he goes. He's just on the inside. But can't play back. of the Ferrari team driver. I'm on as he tries to go through there, waiting for trying to get a throw from the big Lotus down the main straight. It's still screaming a lot behind him. Into the Firestone bend they are, and it's Jill Clark leading by just a few yards from Chris Amon. Up Hansard straight, coming to the tight looping bend now, right over to the left, putting the line. And a pit stop for Greg Cusack. One and a half laps gone by, and Greg Cusack is called in the pits of the Repco Bradley. Anyway, still they're racing down up at the S's now, and there's a good view of Jimmy Clark at work. In this Lotus 49, car he won two Grand Prix with last year, but in three years form, today racing here with a two and a half liter engine, and Chris Amon right in behind him there in the Dino Ferrari. Down the main straight, and once again, Amon closing up. Grandise going on back there. Jimmy Clark, going to the and we've got Amon behind him. These two streaking away from the rest of the field as they go through Firestone, up towards the tight Lucas corner again. We've got the clock on Jimmy Clark, and we'll give you some idea of just what he's averaging. The Third man at this stage is car number five on the screen, Graham Hill of Britain, getting the big Lotus coming through the corner, closing up on him. We've got Frank Gardner, who's right in behind him. And there's the two leaders again, Jimmy Clark in the Lotus 49, Chris Amon in the Ferrari V6. Into the straight, one minute, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One minute. 11.5 and there's Amon once again making a bid to get past Clark and they've already pulled out third car which is still Graham Hill Graham Hill in the second team Lotus car Frank Gardner in behind him having a very good time and Gigan now looking for a run past him on Shell Strait but that's Clark that time means that they're averaging, even at this stage, 100 miles an hour. It's Clark and Amon. Amon on a very much neater line through there, having a better drive at the moment. Here's Hill weaving around, and there's the very good line indeed between Frank Gardner and the O'Gegan. The BRM already starting off a little bit. The Ziggy Atwood on But here's the two leaders coming through now. That's Clark. Then we go back to Gardner. Keegan. moving back up again. Then we've got Rodriguez. Bartlett. And I would think that this day, that Edward in car number 12, the last car that's just come into the interview on the screen, is in trouble. He pulled over to let the other two Australians go past him. And they're streaking along Shell Strait now is the two leaders. And here they come into Firestone Corner. What's the entry as they come in? Clark is in the tail out. Amon very nice. Right in behind the world champion. Now they go in on the brakes again. You can see there's the Lotus getting back on the power. Round through Lucas Corner. Amon and into the essence. And here he is. He's held his way. Frank Gardner just coming in on the right-hander. Leo Gigan, there's young Piers Courage going through who made a, quite a bit of a mess up in the first lap and dropped back about seven places. Round into the main straight again and the leader just coming through and the clock is on him again. One minute, 11.9 again. They're still averaging about 100 miles an hour. There's no doubt about it that Jimmy Clark, I'm sure, 
and holding up Amon round through the tight bits of the circuit. You can see how Amon is keeping right up. There's hardly 10 feet away from each other as they go down there. Amon throating in the inside, on the outside with the Ferrari, but it's Clarksville who's showing the way. Risky field coming through now. A very, very good dice and a wonderful drive going on there between Leo Geegan, the car going off the screen. There's Frank Gardner there and Chris Curry from the little 1.6 meter Cosmo. Denny Holm, we haven't seen for a long time. I don't know if he's retired. We haven't seen. There's a car in the pit that hasn't come into the city yet, but I think in the VRM. There's uh, Gardner. is the two and a half litre rep car, howling down the main straight. Amon soft pedaling here at this stage, getting a very good slip screen. And he's, he has split the, the two loaders of that one, Jimmy Clark and Graham Hill. Hill is back just a little bit at this stage. We've just picked up Danny Holm. He's lying about ninth in the field, going up now, straight straight up towards Lukey Corner. And they're left to the now, but Amon not letting Clark get away at this stage. Sitting in right behind him now as they swing round through Lucas Corner. We'll give you some idea. Look at Jimmy Clark correcting the car there very nicely indeed. It's quite a big car to come through. Amon still sitting there looking very relaxed indeed. There he is, he's working at the wheel, the number one Ferrari driver. Out they go now, once again, no power, setting up exactly the same way to the corner. The entry into the main straight using all the circuits here, right through the top end, and here's Hill flashing around the top after them, still in third place. Out they go into the Denny Hall, not having a very a very happy drive, obviously in trouble, somewhere along the line. Down in the double. That's hold now, chasing after Kevin Bartlett. I can all, this already detect a miss from the uh, 1.6 litre car of Holm. As round he goes there, and he can't make any impression. But here's the two leaders and Clive Harper. And we've got the clock on the leaders again. They're coming through the S's now, past Ripco Hill. Round the two bends, and we'll take them into the straight again. Round Castrol. There's the minute. As they swing wide into the straight now. Six, seven, eight, nine. One minute. Trying to lose Amon, get him out of his field. Right at the last minute. Clark went round the outside of it, leaving it was uh, Brian Page who was down the main straight. He did everything right, he stayed on his line. And then Clark whipped out at the last minute, trying to break the slipstream of Amon. But Amon, too crafty for this, was ready for it and sitting there right in behind him. Here they are, nose to tail racing. Absolutely fabulous to see these two world-class drivers at work here. Round they go now, back into the Lucas corner. Look at the line they take. They're using the track. Clark setting it up beautifully as he goes through. Look at this, they change direction very quickly here. And there he is, the 1968 Dallas Grand Prix winner won World Championship Grand Prix. Look at the end. Just watch him ma hit the marker there as he goes out of the corner. His exits and entries are absolutely faultless. He's coming through, but right in behind him is the 24-year-old New Zealander, Chris Amon, number one Ferrari driver. Once again, there's 10 feet separating them. They come down the main straight. Amon this time quite content to sit there and watch Clark go through the corner. Now they're into the 10th lap. As they swing round through, the straight, up to the empty corner again. Jim Clark still leading by about one second, one or two seconds perhaps, from Chris Amon. Round into Shell Straight. 
And they're really planning it on now. Got it on. They got 120. Well, now, in the pit area, they should have been in the car. He wasn't very happy at all right from the start. And there's a, a scene, a general scene of the pit. There's the Alec Mildred team there getting ready with their pit board, giving them the laps. There's nine laps gone. And three runs Greg Cusack down the main straight. The pit area, quite a hive of activity at present with signalling going on. And there's a Hello, he's past Clark. Clark's in behind him now. We missed that while we were in the pit. Amon's got past him. He pulled out one and there's Clark tucked in behind him now. So this is quite a change. With about 10 laps gone, Chris Amon now is leading these, uh, this International 100 as they come down here, down the straight, and he's trying to pull away. Now we'll see Clark, and Clark going through right in on his tail there as they go down. There's a shot of them. As they head up towards, loop him up a little bit. Around they go there, heading on. For the run down through, down the shelf straight. And it's Amon just pulling away a little bit at the stage, but Clark right with him. That'll give you some idea of the speed. They're doing about 135. They break down to about 75, 80 miles an hour. They round through that. Very, very sharp left hander. Quite sharp indeed. And they're into the braking area again. You can see the braking mark. Three, two, one. That's up 100 yards out there. And it's through number four, the red Ferrari, showing the way now into the tight essence. Clark closing up at this stage. And Amon, there he is. He's moving up, probing and trying to pull him along through there. Make an error at this point, but the Ferrari driver, Mr. Garnacol, is pushing and probing there by Clark. And he's very, very relaxed and opens up again as he gets out of the tower. Into the main straight. Down the straight again. One minute, five, ten, seven. One minute, thirteen. And Clark's pulled out, he goes out of the uh, uh, Ferrari's slipstream, and he takes the lead. So it's Jimmy Clark. After about 11 laps gone, an average of nearly 99 miles an hour. Clark's streaking along Shell Strait with around about the same distance back to the Ferrari. You can see it just coming into the picture now, going in on the braking. Clark really putting in a tiger lap, this one. And there, there's the nose of the loader zipping down as he sits it up to the corner. Swings it round there. Coming round through it. See the tyre marks as the cars from the earlier races have gone through there. Amon, look at the thing down there. Amon, look at the thing down there. You can see his arms moving as he sets the car up to the corner. Right in behind, they're travelling at that point at around about 80 miles an hour. Round they go, and then to the far side, and now they hit and run down the main straight again, where they'll reach the speed of around about 150 miles an hour. Down they come now. It's Clark looking for the red. For the red Ferrari, which is filling them up completely at this stage. Into Dunlop they go again. There's, there's Cusack, who's just spun. You can see the dust going past him. He's looking for a push forward. So Greg Cusack has spun. He's made one pit stop already. There's Clark coming into view now in car six. And he's just approaching. There's Cusack over in the ditch down there. Avon goes through. The yellow flag was out. The caution flag. And they just drive the ditch down there. There's the big loaders. The big loaders breaking it up. Putting it on the power again. Really up and get going. The big rear tyres are around about 30 inches of tread on them on the rear wheels. But right in behind him, once again, here comes the tactics. Here's Clark leading it right to the last minute. He's approaching a slower car. In fact, the slower car's moving out of the way now. But Clark, right in, and he's trying to get it in between him and Amon. If he can slow him up and get him out of the slipstream, he won't have so much to worry about. And the rest of the field is streaming on by. We'll pick them up for you as we see them. Just coming into view. Here's Jimmy Clark sitting up the far third corner. 
The yellow flag still being waved within the caution flag. The, bird, the car, number one that's just come onto the screen is the one that they lapped. There's Graham Hill. And he's being pressed quite hard at the stage by he's trying to pick up. because we've still got Atwood in the pit. Denny Holm, way down on power at this point, and he's having a grand battle in these with Kevin Bunn, and he should be a long way in front of him if the car was performing anywhere. The 1967 world champion. Here's the leader. Jimmy Clark, Amon right in behind him, around about 15 yards behind. There's Clark going out of Dunlop corner. In third place is Graham Hill. Now, of courage at this stage. Yes, that's a very, very good duel going on there, Clyde, between uh, Pierce Courage and their Interluki corner now. So we see the two leaders come in, then we, maybe we can pick up this very interesting um, duel going on between young Pierce Courage in the 1.6 litre car and Graham Hill. There we are, look at this. He's followed right up behind. He's been made up a, quite a bit of ground right from the opening lap. A two and a half litre V8 car in front of him and he's trying to force him to the front point of the car. A real day since the last second. Now back onto the leader as they're coming round to Castrol, back into the main straight again. We've got the clock on them again. Jimmy Clark leading Chris Amon as they come out of Castrol corner into the main straight again. temperature is staying right but Amon seems to be still pushing it quite a bit he's closed up the gap on Clark now keeping him right between his sights there really making a go and there's Clark trying to get the slower cars in between him and this blood red Ferrari as round they come through the corner there Jimmy Clark looking quite happy there he's looking in the mirror as you can see him glance off to his right there as he's looking for the where the Ferrari is coming Setting it up, look at this, a beautiful grip. Coming there, look how close the Ferrari is, right in behind him. Here's Clark once again. A master in action there. As through he goes. The tail moving just a little bit, bit, bit oily down there, because it's all from the earlier race. And streaky way, and they're clipping the edges a bit more now. As through they go. Down into the main straight. Once again, aim on. Flip screaming, and here they come, sitting up for a dumb up corner. The only retirement we have so far is um, Vicky Atwood in the V12 BRM, which is still in the pits. And here's this very good third and ball. Look at Courage, clipping the edges out there. Had the tail right out on the rough as he went round through there after Hill. Very, very wild manoeuvre, but he's had it completely under control. Look at these, throwing this little McLaren round the corner. Down about a 120, 110 great horsepower on the Lotus, on Graham Hill there, car number five. And it's distinct colours as it goes through. And here, right in behind him, as the little McLaren really punches the nose up, and he's getting the lead. And there's the Hill Ranch coming out. The one who's left there moving a bit. He was right in the rough, and he looks like he's clipping the edges. So is there's the, the McLaren right in behind him. The two leaders go past him once again, going under Dunlop Bridge, and it's Jimmy Clark by about six feet to Chris Amon. There they go, nose to tail again. Clark leading, Amon right in behind. Amon, tighter on the corner. You can see him with that extra yard, and he's making a bid down the inside. No, he's waiting for Clark to come across. Probing up all the time on Clark, making him really race, and the fans here today definitely getting him on his worth as soon as they come. 
Jimmy Clark on the nose, dipping now on breaking as he sets up for the right-hander. He used to be coming in through the corner. The power's on now. There's the tail moving just slightly. Into the S as they go. Amon tucked in behind him, looking so much more relaxed. Here is the third play. And the pump went off the Ferrari. Amon's really pushing him hard at this point. A bad lap. One minute, 13.9. Yes, they're moving up through the traffic, and I think the circuit is getting a little bit breezy at this stage. Quite a bit of oil being deposited out there. 15 laps already covered. And Dickie Edward just make coming out of the pit area now. Part of That's the VR here. Smooth goes into the picture was uh, Rodriguez. Hello, Amon's in trouble. It looks like Amon's car in trouble. Yes, it's blowing out. It looks like it's water it's coming out of the rear tailpipe there. Something definitely wrong. The Ferrari dropping something out through the pipes. concern at this stage Coming around once again, still but he's still tacked in behind the Lotus so we'll just see how serious this could be there it is as he lifts off you can see the smoke coming up from the back well this is bad luck indeed this could be a very very distressing sign but he hasn't slackened off at all he's still keeping it going right in behind the Lotus we're just trying to find out how many laps have gone by. 16 laps here into the 17th now. There's still a long way to go. They've got 33 laps to go. Which gives them about 66 miles. This will be indeed bad luck for Amon if he has to. Quite a decisive race in the series this one. The new engine that the Ferrari factory threw out, the four valve for seven the engine sitting over the weekend. You can see it starting to steam now from the top tank. You can see the steam coming up through, so the engine is getting very, very hot indeed. In fact, it should be running quite a bit hotter than it would normally be. But Clark's still in front, and Amon's still in front. But the Ferrari engine still sounding extremely sweet. Amon still sticking to the leader, Jim Clark. Round Suzuki now, into the shell straight, round the back. Less than half a second separating the two leaders. Breaking down now as they come to fire zone. Swinging round into the short straight. And up to the tight Lucas corner. Speed's breaking down to about 70, 75 miles an hour. And here's Egan now, who's moved up very rapidly. In the turn half leader, Retro Bramon. And he's starting to put Graham Hill in the Lotus 49. Also a two and a half leader V8 car. Now we saw a very good guy earlier on between Graham Hill and the A better lap, just over one minute twelve. Yes, and there's something wrong with the Ferrari engine because it's pressurizing the oil out. And there's quite a bit of concern in the Ferrari pit. The pit signal's going out. And as they came past there, we saw the Italian engineer having a good look at the car, so things can't be quite right with the Ferrari, the Dino Ferrari of Amon. But there it is, it's certainly not far behind, and there he goes, closing in on breaking onto the Lotus. But you can see this ominous puff of smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe, 
as he settles it up right in behind Jimmy Clark there going through the road in 49. I think and certainly getting but if he's getting this car going it's indeed a, a wonderful achievement he's making Clark run very honest indeed as down they come yes both pipes are now starting to show this this puff of smoke as out he goes when he comes off the throttle meantime Pierre's courage has moved into third position ahead of Graham Hill Puffs of white smoke from the Ferrari becoming more consistent and clearer as they go round now through the tight Lucas corner. And there's the third car at this stage, which is Piers Courage. He's best Graham Hill. He got past him very nicely indeed. And he's come through and he's in third place. And he's going extremely well indeed. Look at him getting it all sideways, keeping it on the road, going beautifully under control, puts the power on and brings the power down. Here's the two leaders you can't just about see. Amon, he's right in behind them. And that's what they get when they put it to the dumbbell bridge. The corner hit him at that particular point. That takes them back to about 98, 99 miles per hour average. The little figures you can see on the side of the road are the braking points. They denote how many yards they are out from the corner. Here's the Ferrari, trailing quite a bit more smoke now. It's getting a bit more uh, predominant as he goes through when he lifts off and changes gear. You can see it. There he is once again, coming off the throttle. Back on the power again. Round through the corner. And I think that little engine is probably getting very, very hot. Something obviously wrong with it. Another car coming into the pits as the, as the leaders make their entry into the main straight and it looks like Amon's making a pit stop. He's into the pit lane now. Car number four going in. Amon is it, coming in and you can see the smoke. So he's leading second place now. We're waiting for the second car to come through. It hasn't come through yet. And there's now. And Piers Courage has moved through into second place. And his car's starting to go sick. There he is going to the top bridge. And something's wrong with Courage's car. Because he's sitting up in the cockpit looking to see what was wrong and it's got a definite miss. This is quite oh, dramatic. Oh, very rough, very rough. Going out of the straight into Dunlop. If possibly we could have a look into the pits now. We'll just see what the Ferrari team are doing there. And there they are. And they're wheeling it away. It's all over for the Ferrari. It was definitely getting, something was definitely wrong with it because there it is being wheeled away into the dead car park and it didn't take them long to sort that out. Bad luck in there. out in front now. Graham Hill is still there. And right in behind him is Leo Geegan from Australia driving his two and a half litre Ripco Brown. He's moved up another place now with the retirement of Chris Hayes. pick up the second, third and fourth car for you but it, it looks like Courage's car back on soon again but during the, uh, the gap that he had or the something wrong with the car, uh, Hill has closed up considerably on him 25 laps covered, there at the halfway mark Well, see, we had this very interesting duel with Jimmy Clark and Chris Amon, and Clark well out on his own at this point. Possibly we can have a look at some of the other runners. If they come through, we'll pick them up for you. But Clark going through, he's back, and coming into view now. 
Here's the second car coming in onto the screen now, PS Courage. Then we've got Graham Hill, Leo Dugan in car number 10. He's lying in fourth place. That is extremely well indeed. As round three they go. The requirements we've got so far, Chris Amos, Matt Pretty Paul, and Dickie Atwood. And there's Frank Gardner has called into the pits. Doesn't look too good having a, a consultation there with team manager Mildred, who's looking for his other car driven today by Kevin Bartlett. Seems to be a bit of work going on there towards the electrics of Garden's car. So the pits are getting very busy indeed. The BRF, there's Denny Holm, still pressing on. Out on his own at the stage, not having a very happy drive, or he had a, a mishap in the earlier race today, and he bent the right rear suspension. But he's got it fixed up and he's racing, but doesn't look to be going as fast as we've seen him go. And he's still chasing Kevin Bartlett in the two and a half litre four cylinder. Graham Hill. 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 Graham Clark streaking along now, starting to lap one of the slower cars as through he goes. Long shell straight, lining up for the left hander. Through he goes, round three. Five, five, five. Then up the other short straight. You can see the car get some idea of the speed. There's a brake. You can see the nose dip as it goes down hard on the brakes, coming back up again. And there's the power going back on by Jimmy Clark. Just getting it swinging away nicely, lining it up for the next corner. nice exit from the corner the slower car he lapped well back in the field at this stage and we await for the, the second third and fourth cars to arrive there's courage no it's um graham hill has got through again now courage has had a mishap once again somewhere along the line he could be a new Hill and Gideon having a very good dice indeed. So Graham Hill has got in second place. Followed in by Leo Gideon. Oh. Well, there was a very rough, a rough lap of uh, Piers Courage about two laps ago, and it must have been then that these two cars got in underneath it. Anyhow, they're streaking up the back stretch now, rounding the Firestone. Up into the short straight and into the tight right hand. Round through Lucas. Into the S's. Past Repco Hill. Leo Gagan. Driving 60 well flies. Really right at the time here. Driving 63 world champion, Brian Hill. What a wonderful improvement in his technique since he appeared up here at Lakeside last year. A fine driver indeed. And you can see how close he is now to Graham Hill as they come down over the start of the line. Well, Frank Gardner is still in at the pits. As, the, um, as Jimmy Clark still circulates very regularly. Courage has been up and down through the field a bit. Worked his way up from the first lap, made a very good start indeed, was about third going out of Dunlop Corner. Then if all of a sudden he seemed to lose it or drop to about seven places. And there's Graham Hill at work in the Lotus 49. 
Jimmy Clark doing about 130 miles an hour and onto the brakes for the left hander. There's the shot as he looks it, goes through there, using all the corner very nicely. Moving up very rapidly and here's the second and third cars. Hill braking the Lotus, setting him up for the corner. Very nice exit out of there, getting the power on. Neil Spinoza with the camera very shortly. There it goes, onto braking again. Front brake taking a lot of the work. Gardner just away now, lost quite a few laps in the in the pit. As Clark getting the power on. And has also rejoined the race. He's been out for quite a One minute thirteen seconds. behind them we have the 1.6 litre McLaren and there it goes streaking into view now on full power down the short straight Courage had a very mixed day indeed a fabulous drive to get up into fourth place he got past Graham Hill and was at one point running second Home on the side. Yes, Clark. Once again, Courage closes the gap on the two V8 and two and a half litre cars as they streak along now at about 130 miles an hour down along Shell Strait. And here's the 1.6 litre McLaren bursting into view now. And he has closed the gap, closing it up quite convincingly at this point. And there's Geegan going under braking. He's taken Hill. A beautiful bit of driving as they went into Lucas Corner. Geegan got past Hill and moves up into No, not a 
not a very good lap. There's some very, very fine driving here by the Australian driver. And then Hillwell just takes it on nicely going into Dunlop Corner. area once again for Lukey, setting it up is Graham Hill, he'll make, make sure the door is closed this time, and there they, there's the view, there's Courage has closed up quite a bit on them now, you can see him starting to come right into the picture once again, this is the fast zone, they're on the back of the back of the power again, and look at, there's the McLaren, a grand fight this is for the Second, third, and fourth place. There's Deegan once again sneaking up, but look at Hill moving across the circuit this time. Keeps the door closed. Deegan can't find the gap. Very nice action shot of Leo Deegan going out on the tail of the Lotus 49 of Brown Hill. Jimmy Clark. 34 laps covered. 34 laps. 34 laps. And look at these three cars all in line of stern. Courage could be still the way to go. Hill it is now, showing the way down to Lukey again. This is definitely the, the, the part of the race that's getting the attention. And uh, Jimmy Clark has possibly slowed a little at this stage because they've closed the gap a bit on Clark. Here they go along the little short straight, and here's the three. Hill, Deegan looking for the gap again. See him going down on the inside. Going on the inside. Here, but it looked like Deegan there making another move. Not quite. Hill keeping him out. Keeping the tail out. See the tail move, and there's Deegan looking for it. Look at Courage. Courage is coming through. Very nice. Their three cars are nearly nose to tail. Graham Hill, Leo Deegan, Pierce Hill. Into the main straight again, and going to run down the main straight to the start to this line. Other right hand, it comes out over there, and there's there's the McLaren starting to go on the inside. Courage nearly looking. He goes through this part of the course very fast indeed. But there's the power of the V8 Repco, sort of pulling away a little bit there as Deegan gets back on the power pedal. As they come into the fast turn corner, it's Graham Hill, Deegan right in behind him. There's Courage. They're making a real race of this. Hill getting it just sort of nicely set up in the corner, just moving it slightly. There's the little four-cylinder, 1.6 meter McLaren. Courage having a very good drive indeed. Been in quite a bit of drama already today. Nobody to push him now, so he's taking things rather more quietly than probably he would under other circumstances. So there's Jimmy Clark as he's gone down through shelf, and there's once again Courage getting the tail right out wide with the little McLaren, fully under control, and there's Gagan going down on braking, trying to get through on the inside of Graham Hill, but Hill's got the door shut very well indeed. Jimmy Clark still holding on. Hill, Gagan, Leo Gagan, two and a half meter rip go. Grab all oh, nearly sideways there. Hill it is there. We're waiting for the other two to come into view. Gagan starting to get a little bit out there, getting right under pressure now. He's got Hill in front of him and Courage giving him the hurry up from behind. Clark is actually only leading by 
by about 10 or 11 seconds from Graham Hill. So it's a pretty good race between these fellows. Yes, they've closed the gap on Jimmy Clark because Clark now is streaking down through Shell Strait as the rest of the field. And there he goes. He's got past him. It's Courage now who's moved up another spot. He's got past Geegan as they set down for the run down Shell Strait. Here's the second car at this stage. Graham Hill coming through. Car number five. In second, and he's right in the rough there as he's getting the pressure on him now. From the flying Londoner, Courage, coming through in the little 1.6 litre McLaren Cosworth. And there they go, and look at him pressing him hard now, getting a little bit on the rough, but not bad, he's keeping him quite controllable. Gagan stood back now, but the pressure was really on. Clark round Castrol corner, into the straight again, bearing down on the line. Still 1.12.9. Graham Hill, Piers Courage, and they're opening up a gap now on Leo Gagan. They've pulled out about 15 yards on Gagan at this point as they go into Lukey. The leader is still Jimmy Clark. He's going up through into Lucas Corner. Here he comes now. The Lotus 49. Breaking, setting it up for the corner. We'll see his entry into it is very good indeed. You'll see the tail just come around just a little bit as he sets it up. That's one of the cars that have been lapped. Lower car at this point. We're waiting now, and here they arrive. The second and third car, Graham Hill, really working hard now for being pushed in. By Pierce Murray, coming through to the 1600 car. by Courage, back to Gagan. Leo Gagan went through in 1.13, and that's the difference between these three and the leader. Clark about 1.12.8 or 9, and they're going through at about 1.13. Yes, we'd like to show some of the other cars, but this is so interesting, this duel, that you can see them coming through there, and it's all up now to see if Courage can get through. 40 laps Hill. gone, 10 laps to go. 10 laps to go in the 50 lap race here at Surface Paradise. And it's still Graham Hill going in now on the braking area, down into 100 yards. And the McLaren closing right up in behind him there, just treating him a little bit with respect on the braking. Hill having a bit of trouble. And here they come, swinging in through the S's. Hill going on the power now. You can see the Alonso's virtually leap ahead as it goes out under the... 330-yard break goes away. Into the main straight once again. They've picked up about a second on the leader. Graham Hill went through nine seconds in arrears of Jimmy Clark. Yes, there they go into Lukey as Jimmy Clark streaks along down through Shell Corner. Here he comes, comes into view now for the left-hander, right-hander to us, the left-hander to him as he swings it through. Still very relaxed, looking quite happy, and though it's very hard to predict, he was, he was leading by a greater distance than this in the final race in the New Zealand Series at Invercargill, when he spun off, lost a lot of time, and he finished, he had to be content with second place. There they are, having a great deal in lead. Graham Hill. A V8, two and a half in the car. And behind him is Piers Courage. And a four-cylinder, 1.6-litre car. A better lap for Jimmy Clark. One minute, 12 seconds dead. Pedro Rodriguez, I think, has gone into the pits. Yes, that's the second and third car. quite right Clive I do detect a, a miss there in the car of Leo Gigan 
and this could possibly be uh, the reason why he slipped back there. He's still keeping it going, but he's not in the duel now uh, that, uh, of Tia's courage, trying to get past Graham Hill. Let's hope Courage can just take it nice and steady and doesn't go off the road there, trying to, to do battle with the big Lotus 49. Because he's, trying, he's driving very, very well in through the corners. He's down on horsepower, but he's getting quite a slipstream down the, down the main straight here, and this is helping him to stay with the big Lotus. Round they come, you can see Hill there using all the road. Courage right in behind him at this point. As they sweep round past the trees. They're in the big sweeping left-hander for the entry into the main straight. And there's Courage, quite content to slipstream at this point. And going out of the pit area on the left-hand side of the street. There he goes, under the drum on bridge. The other car on the right-hand side of the screen was Pedro Rodriguez in the V12 BRM after his second pit stop. Twenty-two coming in. Yes, it's got a stage, obviously in trouble. He's been left two or three times by the leaders, keeping out of the way, but uh, not quite happy with the back end of the car. Just checking it, so whether he'll keep going or not at this point is very hard. But there's Leo Gagan, a little bit out on his own at this stage. Graham Hill, 330 brake horsepower on tap as he goes through, streaking along now at this point. On the braking, you'll notice the nose dipping there as he sets it up to the right hander. Coming through now, the tail coming round nicely, and there, right in behind him, is the maroon McLaren Cosworth of Pierce Curry. Dunlop Bridge now, Jimmy Clark has just got past Denny Hall, down and towards Lukey Corner they go. Five laps to go. Jimmy Clark in shell straight now. Dreaming down the back straight now, into Firestone Corner with some heavy braking. On the power again as he goes up the short answered straight into the Lucas corner. There's the blue flag. Yes, he's overtaking one of the slower cars, keeping well out of his way now. Clark setting it up. And the two cars following him were Denny Holm and Kevin Bartland. Here's Graham Hill. Here's Courage. 1.6 litre. 222 brake horsepower, chasing this big two and a half litre car of Hill. Courage, look at him now, close he is there now, looking right down into the gearbox of the Lotus. Four laps to go, Jimmy Clark has got the clock on him again. Still leading by about eight or nine seconds from Graham Hill. Just starting to fall. There's a little bit around, but not much. Hill still in second place. There's the leader, Clark. 
The lap's running out rapidly now as they circulate very, very fast indeed. Second car still Graham Hill of the United Kingdom in the two and a half litre Lotus, followed then by Piers Courage, also of Britain, driving the 1.3 litre McLaren Cosworth. Fourth place and first Australian at this point is Leo Gagan. Stroll into the main straight again. Nine, ten, one minute thirty. Yes, Clark is um, the most interesting point at this stage is whether courage can get around past the drive. it is it's starting to pull out a little bit more of a gap but not much just trying to get the slower cars Denny Holm is uh, right in be just in front this coming up to him fairly rapidly at this stage but there's Hill still holding Jackson stage around about nine or ten seconds behind the leading Jimmy Clark at this stage the rain gets just a few drops around the air, but here's the little McLaren Cosworth, on current. Into the right, now, then round the loop, and to the entry into the main straight, where they'll touch about 150 miles an hour. There's Clark, just going past Kevin Bartlett. As you can see, the second and third cars appearing on the There he goes now, along the short straight, onto the brakes, sets it up, power back on again now, you see the tail coming around, just a nice speed to keep it, right in behind him now is Bartlett who's been lapped, there he goes. Jim Clark leading by about eight seconds from Graham Hill, then coming Piers Courage and Leo Gagan. We've got the clock on Jimmy Clark. Yes, well, the pressure's all off him now as um, he's still got this nine or ten second lead. And he's just circulating now, running out the laps. Clark setting it up. the white Ripco Ram of Leo Gagan. Signaling that he's stopping down through under the Dunlop Bridge. Well, they would be, have to be made efficient, of course, but that's the way we saw them finish. Jimmy Clark in the Lotus 49, Graham Hill, 
Also mounted in a Lotus 49 would be second. Third would be Piers Courage in the 1.6 litre McLaren Trosworth. And fourth place would go to Leo Gagan in a two and a half litre Ripco Brabham. And there's Clark acknowledging the, the applause of the flag marshals as he travels around through. His second win of the series, he won the Lady Wigram Trophy race in Christchurch, New Zealand. He had two failures in Auckland in the New Zealand uh, Grand Prix. He had the misfortune to blow up on lap 44 and protect in that race. And then at the bend, he went off the road. So that was two races out. There he is, removing the face mask. And then in Christchurch, he won by seven seconds from the Ferrari of Chris Amon, who'd won the previous two races. At the um, fourth and final race in the New Zealand series, Jimmy Clark was leading very, very comfortably when he got into a bit of strife, spun off, and he was second to Bruce McLaren, who drove a V12 BRM by 10.6 seconds. But here he is in the fifth race of the series, Jimmy Clark coming through to receive the, the top award for winning the um, Rockland 100. Jimmy Clark repeating his performance of last year in Queensland. When at Lakeside, he won the International 100. Jim Clark of Scotland, winner of the 1968 International 100 at the Surfers Paradise International Circuit. And this would be a, um, this really puts the cat amongst the pigeons as far as the Tasman Cup points are concerned because for his win today, Jim Clark will get nine points. So that'll be nine points for him. And on top of his score that he carried over from New Zealand of 15 points, it makes that he has now 24 points. 24 points to Chris Amon, who had to retire, who is still leading with 27. So it narrows the gap and it makes this whole series very much more interesting indeed. And there he is, just getting it. And there's the chief mechanic, Leo Wybert, in the coloured shirt going up there. A very, very proud boy indeed. One of the New Zealand team of mechanics that uh, Lotus have working on the cars. The car running faultless all the way indeed. As we mentioned earlier, Jim Clark with two retirements on the New Zealand part of the series in the New Zealand Grand Prix when he was narrowly leading by two seconds to Chris Amon. And then once again at Levin in the Levin International, he made amends for this by winning the Lady Wigram Trophy race and was second at the final race in New Zealand in the Teratonga Park uh, International. Coming over here, starting up on the... Um, on the first of the Australian races and winning here from his teammate Graham Hill in a Lotus 49 and Piers Courage driving very, very well indeed and Courage getting, um, he gets his, I think around about four points, it takes him up to about 19. Graham Hill opening his account with six points because he hasn't raced in New Zealand having his first racing uh, of the Tasman Series this year here in Australia. And there he is, Jimmy Clark, winner at Indianapolis, twice world champion, Winner, winner this year of the South African Grand Prix and indeed uh, starting off on the right foot for the 1968 World Championship. No spectacular driving by Jim Clark today, but really good, honest driving by this great Scottish driver. For the first 20 laps, we saw a great dice between Jim Clark and Chris Amon. When Amon was forced to retire with engine trouble with his Ferrari. Prior to that, it had been a great race with these two sticking grimly to each other. First one and then the other taking the lead. But Clark asserting his superiority gradually as Amon's car began to fade and fade quite clearly as it did and was eventually forced to retire. I think one thing that we must mention here, Clive, is the durability of the little Ferrari engine because he was right in behind um, Jimmy Clark all the way. He made a real race of it. He didn't try to save it and uh, he retired with, I think, about one and a half seconds behind Clark at the time. I think also worth mentioning is the very good drive of Piers Courage. The Cup and the Laurel Wreath presented to Jim Clark, and now he'll do his lap of honour. The other retirements we had, once again, a very, very dismal failure by the BRM team. They're showing not particularly good at all. They seem to be just back in strife again with these V12 2.5-litre engines. 
and uh, Rodriguez and Atwood not having a very happy day at all. Frank Gardner was another disappointment with the two and a half lead alpha of Brabham. We thought we might have seen him really figuring up in the results. And I think um, the drive of Leo Deegan through the uh, early part of it and being first Australian home and until his car went really sad, him and Graham Hill were having a wonderful duel indeed. Denny Holm, uh, as we mentioned earlier, had a uh, mishap in the earlier race in the 10 lapper in the morning. He bent his suspension and obviously this was um, quite measurable by his performance this afternoon. He wa just wasn't going at all well and uh, this would be, the, I'm sure, the reason for this. The 1968 International 100 at the Surfers Paradise International Circuit on the Gold Coast in Queensland. First, Jim Clark in his Team Lotus 49. Second, Graham Hill in his Team Lotus 49. Third, Piers Courage in his McLaren Cosworth. And fourth, Leo Gagan in his Lotus 39. That winds up our telecast from the Surfers Paradise International Circuit. We return you now to the studio.